So it is our mission to eat at all the Cotswold pubs we can to tell you which ones are good and which ones you should try as well. So we're out here yep. to eat all the sticky toffee pudding for you. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. In this video, I will recap our five favorite pubs in the Cotswolds. So settle in, prepare to get hungry, and then book a table at one of these fine pubs for a tasty meal. Tonight, we're about to head into the Green Dragon Inn, and where is this? Cowley. So we're in Cowley in the Cotswolds, and we've heard this place is great, so we're going to go check it out and show you what we get and what we think. When you step inside the Green Dragon, you find a country pub that is charming and lovely and feels quite cozy and classic, but also feels clean and tidy at the same time. That is a nice big fireplace, which would be lovely on a rainy, cold winter's night, which is not tonight because it's kind of a nice summer evening. If you drink bitter, I think you should try this one. Let me know how it is. I don't drink alcohol, but if I did, I bet this would be my brand of choice. I'm excited about this cheesy salad. It's got pickled beetroot, but grilled halloumi, and then a raspberry and white wine vinaigrette dressing. So that looks delicious. And then we've got a selection of new potatoes and vegetables to go with this vegetarian pie which has sweet potato and butternut squash with a korma coconut sauce which sounds delicious okay these are some seriously lovely desserts this is the treacle tart with clotted cream on top and here we have a sticky toffee pudding which is described as having butterscotch sauce and salted caramel ice cream. All right, so I've had sticky toffee pudding, I don't know, seven or eight times already this summer. And what I've determined is that every time we get two desserts, the sticky toffee pudding is always the best of the two. So I'm gonna try both the treacle tart, which came highly recommended, and the sticky toffee pudding, and we'll see who wins the taste test clotted cream on the treacle tart. That's good. You're going to like this pan because it's kind of like pecan pie without the pecans. <laughs> really good. And the clotted cream is really amazing on it. Now I'm taking a bite of the sticky toffee pudding. Oh, there's lots of sauce on this, which Ian will also like because the sauce is favorite part. The sauce is excellent on the sticky toffee pudding, but the pudding is a little bit thinner than I'm used to. I'm used to the sticky toffee pudding being really thick. So while this is an excellent sticky toffee pudding, it's delicious. I think I might like the treacle tart just because it's a little bit different. I would definitely highly recommend both of them, 10 out of 10. You can't go wrong. After filming our first meal at the Green Dragon, we have been back many times to introduce various friends to this fine pub. So I can tell you that all their food is good. The pies, the quiche, and all the desserts, including our new discoveries, the banoffee pie and the fruit crumble with custard. After our fantastic meal at the Green Dragon, we came out here to the car park to find two cars in front of it that are both British racing green. Isn't that fun? And one of them is a classic car, a Morgan Plus Four. Some pubs are made better by the location they are in. That is true for most of the pubs on this list. The new inn is set in a tiny Cotswold village in Gloucestershire called Colne St. Aldwin's and it looks like a place straight out of a Miss Marple mystery. It is picturesque and quiet and utterly beguiling. We traveled here to have lunch with our friend Paul from Swindon since it was a good in-between place to meet up. The food came highly recommended and it did not disappoint. The new inn is not that new. It's actually a coaching inn from the 16th century. The decor is traditional yet well-kept and even a bit quirky at times. 
Overall, I'd say a very comfortable and welcoming atmosphere. The food was excellent. At our table, we enjoyed a delicious chicken sandwich with a generous portion of fried chicken on a fresh roll, a vegetarian entree of roasted carrot, crispy tarragon polenta, labna, hazelnut, and truffle pesto, and also an interesting salad, prosciutto, grilled peach, and goat's curd with lavender and basil, or basil, dressing. And we indulged in yet another sticky toffee pudding, this one with butterscotch sauce and Cotswold cream ice cream. It was simple, classic, and fabulous. Please tell me in the comments what your favorite pub is in the Cotswolds, if you have eaten at any. Have you ever eaten somewhere that had one dish that was so amazing, so yummy, so good, that you decided it was a 10 out of 10 and it made it worth the trip to return to that pub again just to eat that one thing? Well, I've had that experience, which caused me to include this next pub in our pub compilation. It's located on the A38 between Cheltenham and Gloucester. It's called the Queen's Head Longford. It's a family-run gastro pub which focuses on locally sourced food, and I've included it in the list for one reason, the Longford lamb. I don't really eat lamb, but I tried this Longford lamb when we celebrated the birthday of my friend Maureen, and it is incredible. The lamb is so tender and delicious with the tastiest gravy in the history of ever. Portions are huge and they don't allow entree sharing. Therefore, I've not tried their puddings, but I hear they are amazing as well. The Queen's Head also gets bonus points from me for having very funny signs. A year ago, we happened upon this lovely little pub in Sheepscombe and the drive in the dark the first time we were finding it was treacherous, but we had a lovely meal here. So Ian was anxious to come back, so we're here in the daylight. Ian got this lovely cottage pie for his dinner, and I got this roast, which is actually a vegetarian nut roast, but I did get real beef gravy with it. And it came with all these lovely vegetables, cabbage, carrots, cheesy cauliflower. Here is why we love the Butcher's Arms. The location is picture perfect. Their sign is unique and whimsical, and the place is very welcoming. Whether you are a hiker with muddy boots, a sweaty cyclist biking through the valley, or just a family with your dog. Every time we go, there are several dogs wandering about who belong to both the pub owners and the guests. It's a very dog-friendly pub, and there are also friendly local people. Here's Ian chatting up two locals, which I will introduce you to. All right, Ian, introduce me to your new friends. Okay, so this is Mark. Hello. And this is John, and Mark has lived in the village of Cheapskin for 56 years, and John has lived in the village 62. for 62 years. 62, wow. My wife and I came in 1961, but it was only 15 years before that electricity came to Sheepscombe. Oh my goodness! There was no electricity in Sheepscombe until very late on, and even when it came, the, local, the village people were, it was like a referendum. And they were asked, would you like electricity to come to your village? And it was a very close run thing. Oh my goodness. It was more or less 52 of 48. A lot of people didn't want it. They thought it would spoil the character of the village. When we came in 1960, there was another pub across the road over there. So there were two pubs. But round about the year 1900, there were, if you like, 10 pubs. When I say there were 10 or 12 pubs in 1900, they weren't pubs like the Butcher's Arms. Right. They were just ale houses. You're right. A lot of the houses with a bit of room kept one room reserved. Uh -huh. And it was where people could come and have a pint of beer in the winter when there was nothing to do. The men, you know, in the dark nights of winter, it was nice for the men to come along and have a pint with their friends. Yeah. And pint was, a pint of beer was about one penny a pint in those days. Oh, my. It's a bit more now. Yeah. Nearly five pounds a pint. Oh, my goodness. We did have a reputation in, in, in Sheepscombe for drunken ways, didn't we? Anyway, it's still a lovely place to live. You really have to visit this pub both for the sense
sense of community and the delicious food. Here's a look at some more of the tasty bites we've had at the Butcher's Arms, including baked camembert with a bloomer bread, balsamic onions, gherkins, olives, and sweet chili sauce, a very creative vegetarian beetroot burger with double Gloucester cheese, guacamole, and some great side salads, some posh fish cakes made with salmon, cod, lemon, and dill, and they do have a mean sticky toffee pudding, shown here with custard. Finally, I have to tell you about our favorite of favorites, the Mount Inn in Stanton. If you haven't seen our video of Stanton, Ian's very favorite village in the Cotswolds, watch till the end and I'll share a link. It is a stunning video that has a dear place in our hearts. Atop the hill overlooking this dreamy village is the only pub in town, which just happens to be an absolutely amazing restaurant. While the food is terrific, the best part of eating there is the stunning view of the Stanton village and beyond to the Vale of Evesham and the Malverns. We have eaten at the Mount Inn loads of times, and here is a highlight reel of some of their fabulous foods. On this first visit I'll highlight, we had lunch outside on a perfect summer day, and Ian ordered this massive venison burger with tasty trimmings. I had a salad with a goat cheese and beet tart on top. I really understood the farm-to-table concept in practice here. This was a zero-mile salad, as I could look at the garden less than a meter from my table to see where the ingredients were grown. They also have great sharing boards. Here is the cured meat one with manchego cheese and the vegetarian platter with more of their fresh bread, hummus, and roasted vegetables, and olives, and cornichons. So much deliciousness. We enjoyed these platters with our food blogger friends, Luke and Kay from Flawless Food UK. When our sons came to visit, we took them to the mountain as well. We had some posh dinners, lamb with capers and veg, a giant pork loin with fancy veg and mashed taters, and also a gigantic messy burger and gorgeous chips. And then there was my fancy sea bass with the edible flour on top. We also indulged in some epic puddings, a mixed berry crumble with custard and a gooey chocolate lava cake with ice cream and raspberry sauce. Please let me know which of the pubs we've shown you in this video looks good to you and makes you want to stop in for a meal and a pint. I've included links to all their websites in the description below. Be sure to check out my video of the lovely village of Stanton next or perhaps my recap of the summer of STP and the 10 sticky toffee puddings I consumed. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.